Hello everyone and welcome to this final class in creative writing where we will be talking about uh, dramatic structure and a little, little bit about theme which and all this would be how you guys are supposed to organize your stories yeah so since this is the final slides and uh, we don't have that many of them let's just jump straight into it so we're basically starting here with the uh, dramatic structure and now you guys are asking what the hell is this what are you talking about and so you can see the structure here on your screen in front of you you have the exposition you have the rising action the climax the falling action and the uh the new mom if i was able to pronounce that correctly i think it's something coming from the french but uh it's basically your conclusion is the final one yeah where everything gets like solved and perfectly just nice okay so basically what we're starting with here is the exposition and as you can see it starts flat if you look down on your screen to the left so it starts flat and then that would basically be where you introduce your story that's where your story begins it begins like somewhere flat uh, i'm going to go back and take uh, the uh, lord of the rings uh, yet again as an example where would we be in the exposition well that would be when they're in the shire you know the world like the uh, 111th birthday party for bilbo everyone's happy it's a party we're getting to know the characters and so on and so on but like the mood changes all right something happens there's a rising action some then the ring is found and given to frodo and now he has to flee the shire etc etc that's your rising action and so basically what builds up your story your story is going somewhere and then you reach a climax like the big bang everything here everything just happens this is the, like the interesting part this is where like oh shit went down that is what happened here if you look at the uh, if we take the uh, fellowship of the ring the first book or the first film in the lord of the rings trilogy then you can argue for when that is i would personally say that it would be when they're in the mines of Moria being chased by this really old creature called a Balrog. And Gandalf for, like kills the Balrog but falls down the mine shafts with it. That could be one. That could be the climax. Some you could also argue that the climax would be much closer to the end when they get chased down by uh, orcs and urukai and some of the characters die that could also be some kind of climax but let's theoretically stick that it is with the balrog and gandalf incident so there everything happens they flee and after that it's a little bit more moody and broody all over it that the characters are saddened by that they have lost a friend everything seems hopeless and like your scale things are ha still happening but you're like scaling it down and trying to resolve everything that's where you're working towards uh, and if that story would just be one book then gandalf would die or fall or whatever he does we can that's some uh, completely another discussion then you would try to start resolving things the mood would go down and then the story would soon end but in this case it doesn't you don't get to the denouement here that is like for the other books to like finish that part up but here something else happens and that's like a more of a plot twist uh, which we will not be talking that much about here but no i digress a little bit but so the falling action would be where you try and sort up what happens in the aftermath of the climax things keep happening maybe you have some loose ends to tie up and then you get your resolution or the denouement 
where you finish your story. This is where the story ends, and everything is solved. So in the falling action, you can clear up the loose ends, and in the denouement, you can go down and just, this is where we, like, tie it all together. This is where it's done. Here we go. So that's basically how you can look at it. Could be a little bit tricky, but this is how I want your stories to be. This is how most stories are. Then you can have, like, as said, plot twists here and there, that you have a climax, and then you have some falling action, and oh, another climax again. That could happen, and then you keep going like that. But this is the main structure that I want you guys to look at, okay? Perfect. So, a little bit about theme. Now, there's a reasoning behind having Captain America on your left. Uh, I'm getting to it. But the theme is what do you find when you read between the lines? What is the moral behind your story? Uh, and this is a tool for you guys so that you can add some depth to what you write. Um, so basically when we're talking about moral or reading between the lines, Captain America here is a great example. Because yeah, we know him as a superhero. And for those of you who have watched the more recent films, like Avengers or the Infinity War and Endgame and stuff like that. Uh, you know that, well, he's more like, he's just a champion and doesn't have much with America to do. When he was created, this is basically, like, now we're looking at like middle of the uh, 20th century. We're talking about after the Second World War, or even before the first, Second World War. I don't really recall it, but he was created as... A symbol for Americans basically that this is our hero we should be inspired by this man to fight and so there was a, a kind of moral behind the story of like oh we need to be strong for our country that kind of thing uh, we don't have that as much now when we look at the more modern versions but that's where it comes from so you can also think, if we skip that example, then we can look at it more like, oh, this was all along, and this was a story about friendship, or something like that. What is the moral behind your story? So yeah, you can write a story about murder and things like that, but in the end, maybe your protagonist and the antagonist became friends, and then you've tied it up and with some kind of moral conclusion or a theme about friendship and how you should overcome your difficulties. And that's something that you can add. Do that. Don't be afraid to use that. It could become a little bit cheesy, uh, but just try. You can't really fail at it that in that way. Just if you want a theme, go ahead, add it. It's not a requirement, but it can add some depth to your story. And now, uh, as I see also that the uh, my face is covering uh, the two last letters of mind maps, but I think you can uh, just cope with that. So combine all of this with the other mind maps that you have. So basically, this is your disposition. What happens in the story? And then what I would do if I were you, I would write it as a numbered list. Uh, I would start with a presentation of the story and the protagonist, and then a second I would write what would happen, like a murder, maybe. And then on the third hand, I would write that the protagonist investigates said murder, and then what keeps on happening. So first, if I would be you, if I were you, I mean, I would write my story in like just like short sentences in like in a numbered list just to see all right i want to start up here and then i want to end down here good and then after that i can start filling it out with my descriptions and my uh, dialogues or whatever i want here that is up to you but this is how i would do it and this is how you can do it if you feel more confident in using any other method then go ahead but this is how we could work. Now we have taken everything we have, starting with um, 
the plot and the setting, then moved on to characters with crises and conflicts, and now we've come down to like the overall structure of how we're looking at things. So, for your next class, you guys will start working and writing your actual stories. So, good luck with that. I'll see you guys in class.